Do you wanna know three simple steps on how to effectively close somebody? These three steps are something that you can incorporate into your next sales pitch, or at least preparing for your next sales pitch. And as a matter of fact, if you actually pick these three things apart and look into detail, you're gonna find out that some of them are actual things that you start to start to plant seeds in when when you're actually doing the first initial interview you might call it a 1003 application i call it sales conversation most of the time and these three things are really going to help you address the i guess the key components you can call it of how to effectively close somebody <laughs> Because right now, you know, you go through a sales process and that sales process typically starts as marketing and then intake or, you know, however you get it. Intake, it could be inbound, outbound. Just because intake has the word in on it doesn't mean, you know, you, you it's from inbound leads. This is also outbound dials and cold calls because you you somehow persuaded them enough to comply with you. And so you're intaking an application, you're intaking an inquiry. And so these three techniques should become habitual for you. And if you can adopt these three techniques or these three steps into your sales process, you're gonna find efficiency most where the process goes marketing, intake, uh, selling, which is the pitching part portion, and then converting into a closed sale. This is when it's actually done. And so uh, strategy number one. Number one is it has to be about them. <laughs> It sounds so simple, right? It has to literally be about them. And let me let me explain. So when we usually go into a sales conversation, we think we may think it's about them because we are listening to their requests. We're listening to their wants. And these wants sound some a little like I want a lower rate. I want no costs. I want lender credit. I don't want any fees. And so if we interpret that wrong or we do it the incorrect way, which is basically the opposite way of, of how, I, how I teach you here at Sales Remastered, you're instinctively going to want to deliver exactly what they want and what they request. And so the way you price your deals out are you know, always max lender credit. It's always, you know, I, this can't be no fees. I even need to cover the appraisal. Instead of taking the creative route and saying, okay, well, they're gonna defer a payment. They can technically make up for half of that cost or what have you. They're gonna get an escrow refund. You know, this is something that, that could ultimately outweigh you know, the, uh, uh, the overall settlement services. And so instinctively, we'll go ahead and try to deliver that. The problem with that is though, is that the prospects, they don't know how the process works on our side. And so if we just keep it on, in the shell of, okay, you want a lower cost, you want lower rate, you want lower fees, and we just operate off that, we're not making it about them. And so what I've learned is that when you make it about them, them meaning the prospect's actual scenario, and so you could find out things as to, you know, what I usually do is, is always look at, well, what if they didn't do this one thing? What if they didn't take these necessary steps? What would happen? And so I, I come at it from a, a fear of missing out standpoint. Like, well, what would happen if they didn't do A, B, and C, which A, B, and C typically is buying with me. And so you gotta make sure that it's about them. Now, step number two is, number two is you have to deliver it in a, in a per, per, particular order. And I think a lot of pitches are kind of brought into an order that's that's a little flipped, it's a little backwards. So number, number one is that when you go into a sales pitch, usually what happens is you, you start off with costs and fees, and then we'll merge into the benefits of that particular option. And I think the problem with that is, is that when you start off with points, fees, or costs, you're putting them in this state that they, they're they guarding themselves and they're judging it. It's not your fault that they're judging it, they're just judging it based on their experience, they're judging it based on their knowledge. And you and I both know that they typically don't have as much knowledge as we do. So keep that in mind, so when you're actually going into a sales presentation, sales pitch, or going in for the close, you need to make sure that you delivered it in the right order because that number two is gonna lead to number three. And if you deliver in the right order, then you are going to be lined up to actually go in for the sale. And usually what that order is, is you have to reframe them. So you, number side note, you couldn't do this properly if you're trying to do it on a one call close. So if you're a one call closer, I mean, this probably ain't gonna work for you. I think oftentimes not, not too much actually works out for you nowadays because the, the fact that 
you want to be a one call closer, it may be actually what's holding you back and what's anchoring you is because you're actually getting the common objection too many times like, okay, well, let me see what this other company has. Let me see what I can get elsewhere. Let me go ahead and think about it. I'll talk to my spouse about it. And those are commonly the kind of the excuses that lead to people going ghosts on you. And maybe your follow-up skills is horrible. So you like, hey, dude, I want to do a follow-up call. I don't want to have to outbound dial whatsoever. And I get it. But if you make a small adjustment and actually breaking up your, your conversation to your sales pitch in two separate calls, you may find more success. Now, number two lines up to number three because if you do it in correct order and you frame the cell right and you you start off with the assessment, meaning you're basically sharing with them all the information you heard from them, so how it applies to them, not their wants for free loan, not their wants for a lower rate, but I'm talking about when, when you heard them say, I need this because, whatever was after that because, is what applies to them. So I need this because, you know, um, I, 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 my, my spouse is no longer working or she became a homemaker or she's on maternity leave or we are living check to check or we're at a deficit. And so all those things are applicable to them. And so your pitch should begin with your assessment because you're letting them know subconsciously that you listened to them, you heard them, you appreciate them and that it's for them. That's so, so important. And then number two leads up to number three because when they hear this, they are now kind of preset to listen more, right? And so they're in a place of, of actually absorbing your message. And number two leads into number three because if you do it correctly, you're going to do the third, which is you have to put them in an emotional peak. An emotional peak, what I like to think of it as is that moment that they say, oh wow, yeah, this is great. What do we do next? That's the peak that you need to put them into. And, and number two, you can't, you, basically number two, number three, they're, they go hand in hand, but it also merges in with the initial sales conversation. And so we have to be you know, somewhat proactive and understand that we are actually building uh, for, step, for, these, for number two and number three in the initial sales conversation right from hello. And sometimes we can't see far enough. And so we go through this rigorous process of just asking you know mundane questions like hey how are you today oh that's awesome how many kids do you have how old are they oh is the one in third grade because you think you're building rapport and you're gonna be amazed that more and more people they don't know how to connect intellectually like that they're just not like that anymore because of social media um, fear of, of sharing information and, and fear of wasting time and so I think the the human nature of, of us kind of adapting to a certain way of being a little bit more closed off and shut off especially on guard when it comes to salespeople is is actually going to be triggered if you try to bring up you know fake questions and so if you can utilize those three steps and again, the three steps is, is, is all outlined in this video. So, you know, be sure to watch the video again if, you don't, if you're not understanding. But number two and number three out of the three are actually started from the initial sales conversation. And I think you really, really need to adopt these three steps. If you're coming across the objections right now of, oh, let me think about it. Or, oh, let me uh, talk to my spouse about it. Or, oh, I'd like to see what other places got. Or, I, you know, I'll, I'll call you in a week if I feel like moving forward these are um, cues that you're actually doing you're not doing these three things and if you could adopt these three things I think you're gonna get more return on your time and you'll actually look at your time in a little bit of a different way you'll, you'll look at it where you value it and where you when you when you value your time you become a little bit more efficient with your time and when you become more efficient with your time you just simply get paid more so that's the upside so really adopt these three things if you like this video please hit the thumbs up comment Comment which of the three are your favorite, which of the three, you know, do you do? Do you do all three? Fine. Comment it below, you know? And don't forget, every Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I do a live stream called Breakfast of Champions. And it's happening every Thursday. Last Thursday's uh, live stream went very well. And it had to do with um, phrases and questions that make or break your sale. Uh, I'll leave a link below this video so you can catch it if you missed it, but definitely take these three steps into closing a sale, look, you know, close to heart and find out how you can adopt these three things and actually fuse them in. And if you'd like to learn more about the wordplay and word tracking that I like to use for inbound, outbound, 
purchase refinance and also a conversion checklist go to salesumaster.com or click the link below that says banker script request a copy of the banker script if you requested one more than a couple months ago request the updated copy one and use your personal email address man i'm still seeing business emails and i'm still getting reply you know messages or dms like hey man i requested your script because you're not following the direction boo boo you got to use your personal email. Use your personal email you get on your phone, your primary email address, and then you'll get it because your work email quarantines my salesremaster.com site. You know what I mean? That's just what they do. And so if you go to salesremaster.com, download a copy of the sales script, take a peek of the vehicles that I got for you to take you to the next level, and I'll see you there. Bye. Now I'm up. Yeah, my whole squad up. We ain't never gonna give up. Rich is for. I could never hear. Diamonds in my ear. Say this clear. I could never feel. This gonna be my year.